One in five Americans have first-hand experience with depression, bipolar, or other mood disorders. Depressive illnesses cost our economy about $210 billion in lost productivity and increased medical costs. There's a lot of people suffering from depression, and you would wonder, why don't they just snap out of it? But is it that easy? What causes it? What gets you out? And what what is it that people actually cannot get out of bed? And for some of us, we'll be saying, just do it. But is it actually that simple? That's what it's going to be about today. And what is God in all this? Anyways, with me is a wonderful guest, Deborah Gilly. She's an author, a poet, and a composer. And she is with us today that went into a deep depression to a level she would have never, ever expected. And today, when you hear her story, I know you will start relating that when she can do it, you can do it too. Deborah, welcome. Thank you. Now, your husband got seriously sick. Yeah. He had a blood clot. It was very, very bad. And your sister committed suicide. How were you able to put up and handle with this all at the same time? Well, Barbara, I did what I usually do from the time I was just, you know, a little girl. I had... Uh, always had a lot of responsibility and you just go you just do what you have to do you know and uh, so I handled it I thought until December of 2014 when I landed in the hospital six months later. Whoa, whoa wait a minute. How, <laughs> why did you end up in the hospital? Were there symptoms of something or was there a struggle? Well I actually didn't pay attention to the symptoms. I just thought, well, maybe it's my blood pressure or my thyroid. At my age, you know, so many things go what wrong. What were your symptoms? <laughs> what were the symptoms you were struggling with? Well, two weeks prior to my hospitalization, I, someone would be talking to me and asking me a question. And something would come out of my mouth that made absolutely no sense at all. I couldn't get the task at work done. I, mean, I was responsible for budgets, uh, our departmental budget, which was you know over a million dollars, and I had to do all these spreadsheets, and I had to do 20 things at once, and all of a sudden, I couldn't even do one thing. Everything wow. was a struggle. If I was on the phone with a client or customer, I felt like I just wanted to come right through that phone and grab them, <laughs> you know? It's like yeah. I literally felt like I, what is going on? And um, so the weekend, well, actually it was uh, the Saturday prior to Sunday, which is the day later when I was admitted. Uh, thank God my daughter had uh, read an email that I sent. So, uh, you know, some weird things are going on with me. I can't put anything together. I can't concentrate. I can't think. I feel like my mind is just going, and I, I don't know what to do. And so she must have been kind of a scary feeling of like, am I going insane or what is going on? Well, a person like me who had spent their whole life always plowing through things, you know, we think we're super, you know, uh, like we can do everything and we can't. That's, my so body was breaking down. When your body was not really thinking, did, right. they, did they maybe think you had a stroke? That's what my daughter and my son thought. We got, a, they got on the phone and brought my husband in on the conference call and said, mom, you're, you can't even talk right now. You're slowing your speech is slurred, you, you don't sound like yourself. And I went, oh, no, no. no. I mean, you, you, I just was too out of it. So no. you're into the hospital right now. <clears throat> you, are, you are being diagnosed. And what was, the, what was the result of that? Well, after two days of a battery of tests and initially being admitted because doctors thought I was having a stroke, they come to me and they say that I have conversion disorder. 
And I said, what is that? Yeah, that was my question. What is what that? You, you know, uh, and they said, well, it's in the family of depression. And I went, no, 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 no. You have this all wrong. Are you saying I did this to myself? And by that time, I really can't talk. I can't walk. And, and I'm thinking, I did this to myself. Mm -hmm. Because my whole family had suffered from depression very early on in their life. And I, for some reason, escaped it. So here it. you are. But how did you, what was the answer to move out of that? What Did they put you in some type of an institute? It sounds kind of crazy, but what did they do well, to help you? They bring a social worker around. And the social worker uh, gives you advice on where you can get. Uh, help for mental illness they're using these terms and I'm I'm just I'm not accepting this at all honestly I'm thinking denial. oh absolute I denial would too. you know it's too, like yeah. no because th it's so misunderstood so what is it that happened to you next here you are mm -hmm. you are in there what is it that they did with what was the solution well um, they don't force you into any sort of uh, rehabilitative services of any kind. I mean, they, they offered, we'll help you walk again, we'll help you talk again. At that point, I couldn't even write my name. It took me six weeks before I could write so my name. So you ended up... And so I, I ended up taking their advice and going to some mental health services at a local facility. And I walked in there and I went, God, Get me I out don't of here. belong here. <laughs> I saw these, and I said, I don't belong here. I felt shame. I felt guilt. Um, but God gave me a promise, and He gave me some good advice. He said, If my son can ask for prayer, so can you. Wow. And I want to hold it right there. If, if my son can ask for advice, so can you. And uh, what we're really saying here is, if Deborah was able to advise, to, to, to ask for advice to get through, so can you. You want to hear what is next? We will be right back. Hi, I'm Gary Bell, Associate Pastor at Bayside Church of Citrus Heights. And if you're interested in a program that deals with the issues and the challenges facing today's church, as well as the challenges that face our world today, then tune into The Barbara Marshall Show. It's biblically based. It's going to give you reasons and answers for your faith, and it's going to point you right to Jesus Christ. So check it out. You won't want to miss it. just told me he was going to use this show to help you. So I want you to really listen and pay attention as you're hearing what God has to tell you about depression, about stress. And guess what? Stress is your body's way of responding to any kind of demand or threat. When you feel threatened, your nervous system responds by releasing a flood of stress hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol which stimulate the body for emergency action. It's amazing how God has put us together when all that stress comes into our lives, how to respond and deal with it. And the best thing we really should do is to not make it our own problem, but give it straight to God. Mm -hmm. You were, Deborah, you were in the hospital. They put you in a place for help. You walk in there and you say, I don't belong here. And yet you knew God had a bigger plan. They start working with you. And normal counseling programs always take you to your past. Yes. Did they take you to your past? Yes. What happens? Well, I'm actually still in the whole process. 15 months later, I'm still in counseling. I'm still getting help. I'm asking for help. As a child, I was the one that my parents said, you're going to take care of everyone. So I wasn't allowed to be a child. And I wasn't raised in a Christian home. My, both my parents were alcoholics. 
Um, and so from a very early age, I took on a lot of responsibility. Didn't you say something that you were taking care of your siblings at the age of six? Yes, yes. I have a, a twin brother. I have two sisters who are twins. I have a, a younger sister, and I had an older brother who's now deceased. But because my parents, God bless them, I honor them, I love them, but they were alcoholics. They were very irresponsible. So I just took it all on from a very early age. So it really wasn't, I mean, I didn't think of me. And this is, this is what is so important with people. So what I'm hearing you're saying, you've pushed yourself away all your life. So yes. when you ended up as an adult in the yes. hospital, you yes. were still pushing yourself away because yes. you had learned to storm through things right. with nobody stopping, which is a right. real deal typical response. But yes. now they make you come back. And let me guess at something. Mm -hmm. Normally spoken, when somebody in your in your state becomes a teenager and has missed has rejection abandonment has not felt loved the first young man that comes by yes. is all of a sudden he likes me he cares about me he loves me yes. did you fall for that trap yes and here i am unwed pregnant at the age of 18 um honestly barbara i, I didn't think I, even then, that I needed help, I was just going to, you know, do what I needed to do, right? But um, God had something else in store for me. Wow. He could see that this young, young girl really needed to know what it was like to love and to be loved. Wow. And I had never, I'm going to cry here in a second. I'm trying not to. That's okay. I had never felt love, ever, at that point. And I was watching Billy Graham on television. And I heard for the first time such words of love that I just fell face forward on the living room floor. And I just began to sob uncontrollably like a little child. And I asked Jesus Somebody that day. Somebody cared. And yes. it was God, your creator. Yes. He touched you and told you how beautiful you are. Yes, he did. Wow. Did things change at that point? You're pregnant, you're 18, you feel God's love. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would have been next? What about the father of the child? Well, of course, my parents were not um, in favor of me getting married to him. Um, they pressured me, actually, at that age. They're not being very supportive. It's not like they wanted me to... Um, Is it they, possible they, they did not know how? No, they didn't know how. Yeah. They did the best they could. They didn't know how. Because I've learned so often I'll be <clears throat> offending someone or even mm -hmm. my own family, and then when I really look at the bigger picture yeah. and how they were raised, it, it's not that yeah. I'm excusing them, because I yeah. will not, yeah. but they simply don't know. They just well, don't know. I think, I think the the issue was that I was the one taking care of everyone and now I'm the one that has failed them. That's how it felt. You failed us. You've always been strong. You've always taken care. Now look at what you've done. You weren't supposed to be that child. You're supposed to be this child. And so, you know, one thing led to another. I was actually very pressured into marrying the, their choice. So you married, you're still trying to please your parents, yes. you still try to earn their love, love. you're yes. still there, and still now feeling years ashamed. and years yes. later, 11 yes. years later. Yeah. Well, it, um, it takes a lot of courage to, to, to really look at those things and um, to actually look at yourself and take care of yourself. For me, it, it was not anything I was used to doing. And so acceptance that this had happened, that it wasn't my fault, that what God was really saying is, it doesn't feel good, but I promise you, all of this stuff you've been carrying, I'm releasing you from it. I'm releasing you from it so you can be free, so that you know it's not anything you, you've done or have to do, because my love for you is unconditional. Wow. 
and this is where I'm at. I'm finally at a point where I'm accepting that I'm okay just the way well, I am. And that brings me to a verse that there was just talking about. It's a famous verse, but there is a reason why it is the number one verse out of the Bible for many Christians, and that is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And guess what? That includes you, that God longs to reach out to you too. So if you're stuck, if you have been struggling, if you have been mistreated, know there's hope. 855-515-5550 or go to Barb TV. But before we actually move on, there is one important key. God will never leave you stuck where you're at. He always shows you the way out. Stay tuned. heard an incredible song all about the father and when you're hearing Deborah's story it makes completely sense and uh, what I loved about it was the little feet that it's right started with there God has got this and God will never leave you or forsake you she was in a mental uh, institute or was getting help locally then she's learning about everything that she's been burying all her life and then God says, I've got a whole lot more for you than you ever even imagined. God had a plan for you. What was part, as not just composing, but there was mm -hmm. more part of the healing process you went through. Yeah. What was that? Well, I heard this little voice saying, write a story about a seahorse. And it wouldn't leave me. Day and night, I was hearing this little voice. Say, and, the, and I finally said, but Lord, I don't know anything about seahorses. So I went to my computer and the first thing I see is that the seahorse is actually carried in the daddy's pouch, not the mommy's pouch. Wait a minute, how does that work? I don't, it, well, it's, it, the, it's whatever the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> seahorses do. <laughs> All right. but, but it goes right in the dad's pouch, and the seahorse will uh, the dad will carry that seahorse until it decides to come out. <laughs> okay, so okay. it comes out fully developed. Wow. Um, 
but I, Isn't I just, that a I was beautiful so, yes, way to really yes. think how God carries yes. us yes. and helps us and yes. helps us to move forward Absolutely. in life. Now, this is it, the book that you have, yes. uh, Zoe, the little seahorse, yes. right here. Tell me a little bit how this was therapy for you. Well, how did that work? You know, children can't hurt you. And I just thought, what a wonderful thing that Papa God would do for me where I'm not in my right mind, right? I can't do any of the things I, I used to do. And so I thought, well, how delightful to write uh, books for children because they're not going to reject you. And uh, of course, I have some grandchildren. So I finally took a step of faith and put my pencil to, to paper. And the next thing I know, literally, in no time, I have four stories in one. The, Zoe is a delightful child, and everybody loves her, and the community comes and celebrates her. And uh, then, of course, um, you have to have a villain. And every Why story. the name Zoe? Where did oh, the name Zoe come from? It just from? came. Just out of nowhere. Just this is a very nowhere. friendly yeah, she's just kind a, of a feel name, you know. Yes, uh, yes. So and she's got delightful friends. Everybody loves her. And so, and in the end, Billy the bully, he becomes Billy the buddy because uh, of Zoe, because of her friendship and her faith. So while you're reading these books, yeah. when you're writing these books, yeah. it helped you to yeah. recover. Have you today yes. fully recovered from where you need to be? Oh, no. No, I'm not even close my my uh, concentration isn't it doesn't even compare to what i had before and i've been trying barbara to get back to that person that i thought was so great and wonderful and could do you know 100 things at once not anymore i don't want to go back to that person i'm this is my new normal whatever normal is i'm liking this person this person is learning how to live in the moment this person understands there's nothing. I couldn't save myself. Right. There's nothing I can do. I can't make up for anything. God's grace and love so is all So what you're telling needed. me, you're happier now, not fully comprehending life at every moment of the day, yes. running 100 miles a day ahead, and now you're resting in God's love? Is that what you're trying to tell That's me? That's exactly what I'm saying. And wow. it feels wonderful and very liberating. Now, Deborah, there are a lot of people that are struggling where you are at or where you have been and what yeah. you've come from. Mm -hmm. What is your website in case they want to get a hold of you? Well, they can contact me uh, on my Facebook, Facebook page. Uh, we have gilliesmusic.com where uh, we're posting music, poetry, books, um, and you know, I'm just, I, I want to be a friend to anyone out there who needs support, who needs, maybe your friends, maybe your church friends, maybe your family, they don't understand, maybe they're saying snap you out of it. You need somebody that helps and you. And you need somebody that understands who's been there. Great. You can re contact me through my Facebook Perfect. page and I would love to be your friend. Deborah, I want to give you my book, Rincent, oh. Loving Yourself from the Inside Out. Oh, and wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. For sharing reality. And thank you. we are a reality show, and um, reality is bringing real people with real problems, with real solutions. And that solution, every time I'm amazed, God is always in it. And there's a part in the Bible that I would like to read from you. It's from Psalms 40, starting at verse 1. And uh, this, this is just beautiful. If you really learn, because this is exactly what Deborah had to learn through the experiences of burying everything away. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. Even she was crying and not knowing it. God was there. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mirror. He set me free on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in 
the Lord. And um, what really hit me is um, there was a one word in there and that was, he pulled me out of the mud. And about two weeks ago, I saw a vision. And in that vision, there was a big, thick layer of mud that was right above me. It was so thick, it could not be broken. And then all of a sudden it lifted, but then it came back and it came back again. And in the middle of that, there was a bird. And in that bird, Jesus reached his hand through that. And he had a stack of money inside of him. And I learned that even if the mud and the darkness and the thickness was so thick, nothing would be impossible for God because he died on the cross and rose from the dead to break that. So to make the impossible possible so you could be set free too. Jesus already paid the price. Jesus already defeated, defeated Satan and Jesus will do it again. Actually, he did it once was enough. And what he's saying to you, all you have to do is turn to me and I will minister to you. I will love you. I will help you and I will show you the way out. If God could do it for Deborah, and if she's more content today than ever before, God can do it for you. The question is, do you want that? I want to say a prayer for you right now in case you want to receive that. It's as simple as ABC. Ask, believe, confess. Dear Jesus, and you can repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I ask you come into my heart. I believe you rose from the dead after you died a terrible death on a cross that you did not deserve and you did it for me. I confess the mistakes I have made. Will you please come into my heart? And there is a little bit more to that right now. But if you just prayed that prayer and you sense that joy of the Lord, He has received you. He has accepted you. And what He's saying to you right now, turn to me. Let me help you. Call me and tell me about it. I want to help you more. 855-515-5550 or go to our website, barbtv.org. Have a great day. And how do you go about life when it turns out differently? than you ever would have expected. Yeah. Now, when you were a boy, you know, you, you all of a sudden realize you're different. I, I didn't know why. And I went home crying. I said, Mom, why, why am I not being before? That not being able to walk limits one from enjoying life. Whenever I get bummed out, I try my best to Love God, but love others as well. You love them as you would love, you know, anybody really.